Hello everybody, this will be the blood lab. So we're using some synthetic blood and we've got five of them. You are going to be testing for blood types and for um, the rhesus factor. So what we're going to be doing with our samples, we've got our five samples here. We have the mother, June. We have the child, Andrea. And then we have three samples right here of potential fathers. So sample one, two, and three. And then back here, we have the serums. So we have some anti-serum, uh, some anti-A serum to test for blood type A. We have B right here. The yellow lettering makes it kind of hard to see. And then we have our anti-D serum to test for our rhesus factor. And then what we've got here, so we have these platelets right here. They are going to be used to place um, blood. We're going to put blood in all three of our wells and they're labeled. I don't know if you can see the label. What if, I mean, what if I do that? You can kind of see it. So we have an A, we have our RH, and then down here we have our B. And we have a plate for each of our samples. And then, so what we're going to do, we'll put a blood, we'll put uh, a sample in each of our plates, fill up the wells with a few drops. You don't need a lot. And as a matter of fact, if you have too much, you're going to need a lot of your serum because this will overwhelm anything here and you won't see what you're supposed to see. Once we have our blood in our wells and we've put in some serum, we're going to mix it a little bit with our picks and conveniently the picks are colored to match our serum color. You don't want to mix up the picks. If you do, you could contaminate your samples and then you have to start all over again. This happens all the time to students. They'll be doing their blood sample tests, they're chugging along, they're almost done, and then they'll pick up the wrong pick, stir it, and then they think they have their answer, and then they'll come up to check the answer key, and it's wrong. So you really need to be careful because if you get cross-contamination, you have to start all over again. So what I'm going to do, I will set out all the plates with our blood samples in the wells, and then I'll come back and we can stir everything up.
All right, let's come back over here. So, let me readjust this thing. Ooh, don't want it to fall. All right, so now we have all of our synthetic blood in our wells with our antiserums. So, they've already all been stirred. And I don't know if you can see, let me turn on some more lights. Maybe that'll help. All right, so hopefully, maybe if I bring the All right, let me bring the plates to the camera. Maybe then you'll be able to see what's going on. Camera doesn't want to focus, okay. All right, so here you can see that the B blood, you can see those little granules there? So that's clotting. And a lot of times it's hard to see, but that's kind of what we're looking for. Some of these synthetic bloods clot better than others. But you can clearly see those little clumps. That's what we're looking for. So then we'll look at our A blood here. We'll see, does, do we have those little granules? And it doesn't look like we do. So we would go with B blood. And then we want to see, uh, for our rhesus factor, what do we have? Is it cloudy? I would say no. I, I don't see any granules like you do for the BB, for the uh, B type. So here we would say that this blood, um, June, is B minus. So we'll put that back down. So then we're going to go over, sometimes this camera doesn't want to focus. Now we're going to go over to our daughter, June, uh, daughter Andrea. So here we go, bring that up, hopefully the camera will focus on it. There we kind of go. All right, so let's look here. Well, we kind of see that there's some clotting right there. We see those granules for A. So that's good. We know that we're positive for A. Let's look at B. This one's a little harder to see, but I'm seeing granules right there, all up in here. So you see some granules, that's good. So we now know we have AB. Now let's look at the rhesus factor. Try to spread it out. Oh, look, there's like, there's a huge clump right there. So we would say AB positive because we got some clumping.
So far, so good. Let's move over to our three. Ooh, lost the camera there. <laughs> Stop, Abby. <laughs> Move it back a little bit. Maybe if I move that down, maybe that'll be a little bit better. Okay, let's move over to our first potential father. So here we go first potential father, let's check for A. Why you no focus? There we go. Looks like we have a little bit of clotting there. You can see some granules. That's good. All right, let's go over to our B. Okay, I'm not seeing any granules here. So I'm gonna go with my, we're gonna go with negative for that one. So, so far we just have A. And it looks like we are negative for Reese's factor as well. So we would say this first sample is a negative. On to sample two. So here is potential father number two. Let's bring him up. All right, well, right away, you can see that there's clumping for the bee blood. You can see those little granules. That's pretty obvious. Really nice. Let's go to A. So right away, I'm not seeing anything. Let's stir it around a little bit more. All right, so nothing for A. So far, we just have B. Let's go over to our Reese's factor. And I don't see anything. It seems to me that the Reese's factor clots very well when you put in the anti-D serum. Um, the other ones, you just see little granules like what you're seeing right there. All right, so we have our last potential father right here. Let me bring sample three up. So here we are, sample three. Let's start with A. Oh, yeah. So right there instantly see granules, so we know we're A. Let's go over to B. You can see some small little grains right there. So I would call that clotting. There we go. So we are A, B. Now last thing, let's check our rhesus factor. And there we go, a huge clot right there. Quite a few of them. That would make our sample three AB positive. Much so, our sample three and our daughter Andrea have the same blood type. So this is how we would run this experiment in the lab if we were together. 
there's more to it. Um, once we have all of our blood types, like we do now, we can then make multiple Punnett squares to figure out who the best match is. And it might be intuitive, but it never hurts to kind of logically think it out. And for some people, you just sit there and think. For others, you need a visualization, and that's where the Punnett squares come in. They're easy to do. They're easy to set up. So I always encourage people to just make the Punnett squares.